Hey, Steve Guttenberg here, and I am here with Cynthia. You've been on like four or five times, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So I've been on about four times now. I think so. And this will be my fifth. Yeah. The you're the you're the uh, multiple audiophiliac of the day. Yes. And, exactly. Um, you're extraordinary on so many levels. Well, thank you. Some of them are obvious, but some of them are <laughs> that you're just. You're really into this thing. I am. You're an audiophile. I'm an audiophile nerd. And you, you admit it, right? Yes. You don't say, oh, no, I'm not an audiophile. No, I like I'm not trying, to, not trying to say I'm something I'm not. I'm an audiophile. That's a good thing. Yep. And this is the first time you've been to Axpone in Chicago? Yes. It's so really big. <laughs> it's a really large venue. So this is my first time going to Axpona, and then last fall was my first time going to Rocky Mountain Audio mm -hmm. Fest. A lot of fun. So it's not, so now you know your fellow audiophiles. Yes. You've met so many of them. I've seen a lot of people that I met at Rocky Mountain and I'm reconvening with them here, so uh -huh. that's really nice. Uh-huh. Wow. And, um, and of course meeting the manufacturers and the designers. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, so I'm getting to actually put a face to a lot of the voices uh -huh. that I've been hearing on the phone. So I talked to Michael Allen from Jolita a couple times on the phone just asking basic questions about my own gear. Uh -huh. And I actually got to see him in person. Talked to Jared over the phone, got to see him in person and got to actually meet the people from Emotiva, one of my other favorite manufacturers. So Right. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So, what do you what do you think of them? Like, just to generalize, as people, I mean, are audiophiles a certain breed? Of, Absolutely, you know, they're not like other people. <laughs> no, I mean, it takes a special person to be an audiophile, I think, because just listening to music the way the artist intends you to listen to it, it's way different than actually being a music lover and, and listening to music because you love music. You're right. listening to it at a different level than everyone else. Yeah. And I think that getting to be here with a lot of other audiophiles, it's really exciting because you get to meet other people like you and that like what you like. Mm. And you get to share music, learn new music, and learn about new gear, so. But do, do, you're picking up on the tribes, right? There on are the tri tribes? Yeah, there are tribes. There's the audio, there's the analog people, the vinyl people, that's a tribe, Yeah, right? the two people, the solid state people. Right. So, the yeah. horn people. There's yeah. definitely different tribes. Yeah, and sometimes they're like really hardcore, like the opposite. Like yeah. there are certain people who play vinyl who never play any digital. And yeah. Pe and people who play digital who never play vinyl, right? I call them purists. Yeah, they're purists. <laughs> In a way. And they, they, they look down their noses or, uh, you know, say unpleasant things about the opposites. Gotta have tubes or if you're a solid state person, gotta have solid state, have yeah. to have class A power. Right. Have to have to have analog source components. Right. Yeah. If you're not, you're you're on the wrong side. Yep. It's my way or the highway. <laughs> exactly. I think that's really hilarious. You know? <laughs> I mean a lot of people are sort of, you know, in the middle. They play records, they play digital stuff, they're sort of everywhere. But some of them are just on one side or the other. Yeah, it, it's it's like a battleground, I mean, between the different things. Yeah. So yeah. Did you meet Michael Fremer? I haven't yet, oh. but I've it, heard stories. Yeah, he's a, he's a legend <laughs> in his own mind and other people's. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, let's see, uh, cer you certainly hung out with Wendell. Yeah, I got to hang out with Wendell. I got Magnapan. to listen to yeah. the Magnapan room, which has the LRS, the little ribbon speakers, yeah. taking the place of the MMGIs. Right, and you, as a Magnapan owner, Mm -hmm. uh, are you, uh, I would say, uniquely qualified, but you, you're certainly qualified to opine about <laughs> this new, <laughs> this new Magnapan. Well, I have the 1.7 eyes, and when I heard the little ribbon speakers, I was like, wait a second, are these better than my 1.7 eyes? Because these sound phenomenal. Yeah, they're almost like electrostatic light. Yeah, they just, they sound so big for a little speaker. Yeah. And for those who, you know, think Magnapans are huge, these are just the perfect size. Yeah, and very light. Yeah. So you can push them up against the wall. Yeah, and what I like about it is it's all quasi ribbon, so it's there's a lot of consistency there, whereas opposed to MMGs, it was wire plus quasi ribbon. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, one of the surprises for me at the show, you, I don't think you heard it, was the, ELA, the new at ELAC, it's called uh, Karina. 
I've heard you talk about it at your panel. Yeah. The panel a, you were on with Andrew Jones. Yeah, and he, it's the first uh, ELAC, American ELAC, with a ribbon, a folded ribbon tweeter. Oh, really? And uh, he didn't design it. This is like really weird because Andrew Jones is an unusual speaker designer that in his speakers he designs the drivers, he designs the crossover, and he designs the cabinet. That's, that's very rare. That and, is very rare. Yeah, but for this new one with the ribbon, he didn't design the ribbon. This is from the parent company, ELAC in Germany. So this is a German ELAC tweeter that he just had to basically design around to fit into the rest of his design. Oh, wow. He seemed mildly uncomfortable about that, too, actually. <laughs> He d he did kind of seem a little uncomfortable about yeah, it. Yeah, like it's almost like I had to, I had to do this. My boss told me to do it or something. My boss uh, made I, me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. But anyway, it sounds really good. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to listen to it because I got the um, what were the ones that you recommended I get from my dad? They the, were the, the debut B six point two. Yeah, so I, I got the debut six point two. I got the tower version of it oh, okay. from, from my dad, right, okay. and. I like the way they sound. They sound phenomenal. Yeah, no, he's an amazing designer. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite people in the biz. Um, what else did I hear? I mean, there's just so much cool stuff. Um, there's this Ocean Way horn uh, system. It's basically a recording studio in California called Ocean Way. Ocean Wave? Way, W-A-Y. Okay. And uh, I, th I don't know that that's the name of it, but it's a big horn speaker that's used in recording studios that mm -hmm. they're selling to consumers. If I screwed that up, the name of it, I will put the proper name in the description box below this video. But anyway, it's a big horn speaker. It looks kind of like a JBL horn speaker. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's definitely got cool. It's a very cool looking thing. You know? And speaking of horns, other than Klipsch, um, Volti, V-O-L-T-I, mm -hmm. they have a relatively small horn speaker called the Rival. It's now it's in its second version. It's just coming out, the Rival 2. And, you know, it's that thing about they kick ass. They can really, with very dynamic music, uh, it, it feels, to use the ultimate cliche, like you're at a concert, mm -hmm. you know. It just has this energy to it that's really exciting. And this guy, Greg, I can't remember his last name, who designs them, they really very obviously based on Klipsch speakers. He was a big Klipsch fan, he owned many Klipsches, and he just kept tweaking them and modifying these Klipsches until he realized that he has his own thing. And that's when he started this company called Volti. And just fascinating, he was, uh, he told me that he was a contractor, like a, for the built houses, mm -hmm. you know, private houses. And that was his life, was building these houses. He said, oh, but I really love audio. Maybe I should stop building houses and just devote my life to building speakers. That's a bold move. Yeah, but yeah. he's succeeding. It's hard. This is a hard biz to start it from is. zero. And he's doing well. And he gets better and better, and their speakers not sound really good, and they look better than they did when he started to do it. And it's just one of the things I like about this business is when that happens. Yeah, it, I'm always amazed at entrepreneurs and the fact that they can make it in this business and be successful just blows my mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. well that's the thing, it's such a small industry. Even the biggest companies in audio, high-end audio, let's say, even like B&W, mm -hmm. I doubt they have more than 200, 250 employees. And that's, that's big. You know, that's the big companies. A lot of them are 10 people or five people, so. Um, yeah, I've seen companies here with just three people. Yeah, so. so they're more human in scale. You can approach them, you know, about, I want to buy it, but your speaker's, uh, you know, 14 inches wide, but my only, I need a speaker that's 12 inches wide. Sometimes they'll say, oh, we'll make one for you that's 12 inches wide. You yeah, know? but it's crazy though, because I've gone to a couple of them, the smaller companies, and they have really good price points, but really value products. And I'm like, so how do you make any money? Right. And they're like, we don't. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> we don't. We just love what we do. Yeah. Well, that's, so. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're good. Yeah. Did we leave anything out? Uh, no. Okay. This is Cynthia, the Audio Bell, signing out. And this is uh, Steve Gutberg, the Audio Filiac, signing off from Chicago, the Axe Pony Show 2019. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.